my name's Neil Ferguson. I'm the Millbank Family Senior Fellow here at the Hoover Institution, and I chair the Hoover History Working Group. Uh, we're getting back uh, to work this academic year with a new series of virtual seminars, the first of which uh, was just given by Dino Knudsen, who's Assistant Professor of Global Politics at Malmö University in Sweden. His talk was on the Trilateral Commission, uh, Informality, Diplomacy and American Foreign Policy in the 1970s, uh, a talk based on his award-winning book on the Trilateral Commission. Uh, Dino, welcome to Hoover. A pleasure to have you here. This is a subject dear to my heart, not least because Henry Kissinger makes regular appearances in your book. The Trilateral Commission's a bit like the Bilderberg Group and the World Economic Forum. Conspiracy theorists love to talk about how these are the organizations that really rule the world, along with George Soros and the Rothschilds and the Illuminati. When you came to write a, a serious history of the Trilateral Commission, did you feel worried that you had to somehow counter those conspiracy theories? Yes, very much so. I mean, um, I was really lucky to get access as the first researcher to the central archives of the Trilateral Commission, which are in the Rockefeller Archives Center. And there I pretty much got uh, access to everything. So I could go through budgets, correspondences, reports, drafts, uh, meetings, uh, notes, et cetera, et cetera. So I could really go through and, and look deeply into this organization, how it worked, et cetera. And on the one hand, I wanted to try and uh, deconstruct some of these myths um, because you can't run the world meeting, you know, a few times a year, <laughs> try to form consensus with 60 people from, in this case, from North America, from Western Europe and uh, Japan in the 1970s. Uh, that's an impossible task. But at the same time, I also thought it was important, and I think it's important to be critical towards power. And these people are powerful people, individuals meeting, and they had some influence. They were able to leave a mark on certain policies, etc., influence government influence international organizations. So I want to show how that was done and uh, add that to our idea of how the world is running, uh, how the world is, is being run, and also uh, try to, to say, okay, uh, we, we should be critical about that. So it was really a balancing act between those two kind of extremes. So you're not saying the Trilateral Commission is completely powerless and unimportant. You're just saying it's not as powerful as the conspiracy theorists would have you believe. Yeah, and Kissinger called them eunuchs. I mean, he was really, uh, uh, pardon my language, but pissed about them when they uh, um, were coming out and challenging some of the Nixon administrations and his foreign policy to a certain degree. And uh, I mean, calling them eunuchs was was quite actually, uh, maybe he was angry when he said that, but uh, uh, I think it was quite uh, interesting to see that that word because it it, it really, it, it is about what, what, what they're trying to do. So they are obviously not like conspiracy doing conspiracies but they are trying from on a uh, like they're trying to uh, influence government and influence international organizations and they were able to do that so for example during the crisis in 1973 when they were formed we, we had the oil crisis they were actually uh, they were influential in the, you know the world bank policies um, uh, giving you lending opportunities to uh, to countries that were suffering from the oil crisis they were also uh, actually kind of uh, you know, uh, opposing certain elements of the, the Kissinger and Nixon uh, foreign policy. And uh, that, I think, uh, stroke a uh, short with the, with the administration and, at, and had an influence. Yeah. Part of the reason for creating the Trilateral Commission was that the Bilderberg Group, which had already been around for some time, was a transatlantic group that essentially brought Americans and Europeans together. The, Bil uh, the Bilderberg Group didn't want Japan in the room. The Trilateral Commission is partly a solution to that problem. It's partly bringing Japan into this informal community of people not in office, but likely to be in office. Is that right? Yes, and uh, that was very much the new thing about the Trilateral Commission. So, I mean, initially, uh, both David Rockefeller and uh, Spiknit Brzezinski, who formed the commission, really were the, the main people forming it. Uh, they were um, a bit um, dissatisfied with what was going on at Bilderberg, where uh, prominent Americans and Western Europeans were meeting once a year, uh, but they thought that uh, it didn't have much impact. It was more like a, a talking shop and, uh, you know, people shaking hands, and they wanted uh, to form an organization that could really impact government, 
and uh, do that from uh, from uh, I mean creating basically the same framework. So the trilateral commission would be a, a platform where you could have dialogue within the elite, and that would be secured from the public space. So it would be a private conversation, but then that should be translated and converted into public policy, pushing for certain agendas, ideas, uh, also promoting leadership through the commission. So in different ways where the commission uh, influencing government and eventually when Carter became the president, uh, he had been a founding member of the commission. Uh, they had a, a, a person sitting there in, in the Oval Office who were obviously quite of, uh, I mean, they had an open door and uh, Brzezinski became the national security advisor and a lot of commissioners from the commission joined the Carter administration. And there they tried to implement the policies that they had uh, thought about in the commission. And it, it, it was not successful also because they were ferreting in between them. So this just shows that this commission you know, could have some influence, but at the same time, it's not like a political party or a, a lobby group. They didn't necessarily form consensus on everything, but on certain topics, they could agree. And those kind of things they would try to implement, some with success and, and a lot without success. To me, one of the amazing things is that that moment when suddenly Carter uh, is elected president and, and brings a huge number of trilateral people with him uh, into his administration. It's almost as remarkable that their places are then taken by people who'd been in the previous administration, including Henry Kissinger, who'd fulminated against the, the, the trilateral commission when he'd been secretary of state and they'd criticized him. That, that strikes me as evidence of a certain bipartisan character that seems by today's standards quite unusual. Was the Trilateral Commission consciously bipartisan in the American context and also in the wider context? In other words, conservatives and liberals could participate and even change places. Yes, they were very much so. And in a European scenery, they also included uh, some people who were you know, uh, center left, uh, social democrats, etc. Uh, but they would never include people from, say, the extreme right or the extreme left. So generally, it would be people who would be in favor of free trade and NATO, those kind of uh, institutions and and policies. But when it came to the U.S., I would say that uh, it was really a bipartisan endeavor. It was uh, an effort to try and form consensus in a time where the consensus was breaking down, and they could see that the former East Coast establishment, who had really been in charge of uh, maybe formulating foreign policy was uh, uh, you know, declining its influence and uh, new powers, new uh, centers, elite, elites were arising. So they were trying to, to also use the commission as a kind of elite integrator where these kind of different interests could be mediated and you know, uh, form some consensus. But eventually they were not uh, successful. And that is maybe some of the background to what we've seen lately that I mean, we have seen in uh, in American context uh, a very much a breakdown of consensus and uh, this bipartisan uh, uh, tradition. Yeah. So I have one final uh, question, and and it's about uh, the other side because the Trilateral Commission was a Cold War invention, even if it came out of the era of détente. Uh, they never quite succeeded in getting. Uh, the Soviets into the room, although it was tried, but they did succeed or more or less succeeded uh, in getting the Trilateral Commission into Beijing. Talk a bit about the, uh, the, the Soviet and then the Chinese pieces of the story. Oh, yeah. So they reached out to the Soviets uh, during the late 1970s. They wanted to have uh, an, um, uh, they want to approach the Soviets and have a meeting and see if you could uh, have a, a conversation, a dialogue with the Soviet elites. Uh, but eventually, because of the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan, those plans were, were never carried out. So there were just a few, uh, you know, like a few uh, intentions, a few, uh, you know, interactions, but then it died out. But uh, because they didn't want to, to appear as taking side in the Sino-Soviet split, uh, then they also reached out to the Chinese and then eventually they uh, carried out those plans and uh, they were able to go to uh, Beijing in 1981. And it was very much organized through the Japanese wing of the Trilateral Commission, which had close contact with the Chinese. And there, uh, David Rockefellers and others uh, met with the Chinese leadership, including Deng Xiaoping, who was the de facto leader of China at that moment. And uh, they discussed the opening of the Chinese economy, including uh, 
overseas investments, uh, how to, um, to secure them and how to basically uh, put China on that kind of a liberal path that they envision would be the right path for China and try to block any regress to the, to the Maoist era. So that was the intention when they went there to, to do this. And, and eventually, I mean, China went in that direction, obviously not just because of the Trilateral Commission's effort in this area, but I mean, they definitely pushed uh, them in the, that direction also, yeah. Well, Dina, thank you so much for spending uh, time with us. It's been a really fascinating discussion. I can highly recommend uh, Dina Knudsen's book, The Trilateral Commission and Global Governance. Full disclosure, I did once participate in a meeting of the Trilateral Commission, so any conspiracy theorists watching should treat everything I say with a pinch of salt, but not so Dino, who is not a member and approached the archive in the spirit of dispassionate scholarship. Thanks once again, Dino, and I hope we'll uh, see you again at Hoover soon. Thank you so much.